The beauty industry has long profited from getting women to aspire to a narrow set of standards. But for new, younger customers, who want the products they buy to express their identity, those standards are getting old. Charlotte Duboc went to the fifth annual BeautyCon in Los Angeles to see how the world of makeup is trying to change its own look. BeautyCon feels more like a festival for teen girls than an industry trade show where visitors pay up to $300 for a ticket. The price includes access to panels on identity politics. I hate to see when I see a woman with a $2,000 gown or a great bag and her makeup looks cheap. That's bad. Meet and greets with YouTube stars and lots of makeup. So when you enter the convention center, the first thing you see is this sign which seems to kind of break down the philosophy of BeautyCon. It's almost like the Ten Commandments of BeautyCon. And what it seems to suggest is that the event's all about diversity. Nothing is excluded. Um, no one is excluded. And I suppose what's almost missing here is all currencies accepted. <laughs> 19-year-old Aya Hamida traveled here all the way from Texas. She's part of a generation of beauty obsessives who previously felt excluded from the mainstream beauty narrative. They don't look to glossy magazines for their idea of what's attractive, and instead prefer to get their makeup tips from YouTube vloggers, with names you've never heard of, but with Kardashian-sized followings. 2017, this is like the dawn of shameless self-promotion. YouTubers don't care because they tell it straight out there. They're like, I don't care. This is my body. I could do whatever I want. So I respect that because it does connect with me with my hijab. I could wear my hijab and I could wear makeup. I could do whatever I want. I really don't care what people think. Dude, this is like the funnest day ever. I swear. We came here, yeah. For sure, all about that makeup life. The majority of makeup brands at BeautyCon are big on the internet, but can't be found in your local drugstore. How is the beauty industry adapting to sell makeup when the very definition of beauty is changing? Well, I think they're no longer selling makeup. We're in this era of the experience economy, right? So like everything now is about an experience. We don't want to be marketed to in a way in which we feel like we have to be a certain thing. Is this just another trend? Like, no. Where does it go? Exactly. Absolutely not. The world is, by nature, becoming more diverse and ethnic. For every sort of line, whether it's beauty or not, have been primarily for a specific audience. So I think it's going to just begin to get more interesting now. Aya came here for the free makeup, but also in the hope of meeting some of her favorite digital stars, IRL. Who are we chasing? Yeah, come on, y'all. Thank you so much. I got it, y'all. It was a struggle. I feel welcome here. Honestly, not because it's makeup, but everyone's more diverse. There's more different people, and they respect that, most of it. In the beauty industry, for us, it's you, you could do whatever you want. You don't need to care about anyone or anything. Like You just need to go your own way and just don't look at what people are thinking. 